Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you can uh, hear me okay. Yeah, I'm getting some nods. Lovely. It's great to see all your faces. Here we are back again online. Uh, you're very welcome this morning, particularly if you are um, joining with, with us from, um, from somewhere else. If it is your first time with us, uh, connect online. If you're maybe watching on YouTube, on our live stream, you're very welcome. Uh, if you are new to us, we'd love you to get in touch. Do drop a a comment in the comment section just to say hi so we can keep in touch with you if that's something you'd like us to do. But you're very welcome. Um, uh, I hope that you've been doing well in the last few weeks since we were last together like this, um, enjoying the good weather, enjoying beach walks and barbecues and garden parties. We certainly as a family have enjoyed connecting with some of our church family again um, and it's been lovely. Um, but maybe you're glad, maybe you're not so glad to be back online again this morning. I know meeting like this certainly isn't our preference, but it's, um, it's, it's a real pleasure to be able to just to update you a little bit today on some of our plans as hopefully you've seen in the last few weeks um, in the e-news and with Paul's video, um, steps are being taken to, to get us back together in person again, which is, uh, which is really exciting. And as Core Serve team, we've been really um, keen to to, to share some of these updates with you. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to spend some time, Paul and I, just exploring together what um, that might look like for the next uh, season and, uh, and maybe even just more into the long term as well. Um, and then also we're going to spend some time, as we said in the e-news, looking at, um, at the back to school season that we're in for our children and young people and teachers and even us parents. It's an interesting time just getting used to a new way of doing school and for kids adapting to that scenario. And uh, we've got two experts in that field going to talk us through that. Keith and uh, Jill are going to lead us in some thoughts and help us just to uh, discover how we can pray more effectively uh, for those important groups of our, uh, of our family. Um, and uh, we're also going to look at Romans 12 to 14 together. So if you don't have Bibles handy, I'd encourage you to grab those so you can read along, uh, which has just been a really formative text for us as core serve team, as we've just looked at um, how we deal with this, um, this changing uh, time for us as a fellowship. So I want to just invite Paul maybe into the conversation. Uh, hopefully he'll pop up on your screen as well. Morning, Paul. Hi, Chris. Good, Good to see you. you. Good to see you too. Um, so we're just going to have a little chat, just interested to get some of your thoughts and just bounce this around a little bit. We've had a lot of conversations and um, a lot of documents kind of been passed around just sharing what what um what we do next as churches around the around the world really um but uh, but uh, but especially kind of churches um certainly in Ireland that I get to speak to many are rushing to get back together rushing to meet and get the show back on the road and um we've been kind of pondering that as a uh, as a as a fellowship as a core serve team and we've uh, obviously made some plans Paul could you just yeah. maybe just yeah, lead us into that. What are some of the thoughts yeah. you've had? Yeah, so it, uh, it, it's a bit of a crunch time, I think, that churches are experiencing now as to uh, whether or not to move back to meeting in person or whether to stay online. Or And people are, are grappling with some of the ideas around this. And as I've already said, uh, within our church and right across society, there is a, a wide range uh, in opinion of how the government has responded to coronavirus and um, there are people with a uh, scientific and a medical base that have some knowledge on this and they'll have a view and uh, some of us who have a little knowledge <laughs> a little knowledge is dangerous um, <laughs> and some of us have got you know uh, perspectives and so we're, we're, you know there's a, there's, a, there's a wide range of opinion and we really just wanted to uh, we've been thinking and praying recently well how do we respond as the church at this time uh, and as you've already said Romans 12 13 and 14 we believe is the core text that we should view this whole situation through we should uh, base our views upon base our practices upon as well that these words should motivate us and we'll get in a moment or two to, to read them but yes last week it was announced that we're going back to meet in person uh, again and that's that's important um, and uh, online can only take connection so far, online can only take fellowship so far. It was fine, it is fine, 
uh, but really we need to be meeting together uh, in whatever circumstances that we can. Uh, and uh, there has been a team working hard to make the Connect Centre the Connect Centre ready for that, uh, so that Connect groups initially can meet there, and perhaps one or two Connect groups could get together at one time, depending on their size. And uh, there's a there's a scripture that has been bandied about recently about uh, from 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 one perspective that says, "Oh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is," and that is there. But we need to understand and think about the reason why that text was there, and then contextualize it in our situation. And it's about and it's about uh, meeting together to encourage one another and how and as to how we can spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And that is a primary purpose in meeting together. And we, we, we must keep that at the center of all that we do. So yes, there was a, a, a hope that perhaps uh, things could come together for this weekend. That hasn't happened. Uh, one of the issues for those that, that have attended the Connect Center in the past is that we want to make sure that uh, things like there's good ventilation and um, some of you know the building and we want to uh, endeavour to increase the ventilation and uh, things like that. And I want to commend uh, Nick Anderson and Nigel Jennings and others who have worked really hard uh, to make this uh, an appropriate meeting space in these circumstances. So that's really helpful, Paul. It's, it's a good, good kind of overview. I mean, I'm sure people will have questions and, and, and thoughts just around what that what that looks like. Um, we've talked a bit at Corserve team just about numbers, obviously, and that's a, a really key thing for size of buildings and, and, and what's safe for people to meet. And um, <clears throat> one of the things we've just really kind of highlighted is just that idea of two, one or two connect groups. Um, we're so used to gathering in, in, in a big crowd and on Model School Road and packed into that little, that little room and um, trying to find spare seats for everybody is kind of a, a new a normal, but this is going to be a new season. And, um, and, and as we have discussed, this uh, really can be leveraged to our advantage in terms of furthering the mission, in terms of fulfilling the purpose. Yeah. And we call our smaller groups connect groups, but uh, perhaps if two groups got together, they would be a mid-sized group and maybe um, we're going to be talking a bit more about that. Yeah. Uh, the next season will look like uh, mid-sized groups meeting in the Connect Centre. Mm -hmm. But uh, a good question and questions that we have been asking at this time is, if there was no such thing as government regulations based upon coronavirus, what are good ways to meet that enable our purpose of being disciples of Jesus and making disciples of Jesus where we are, mm -hmm. when we are as who we are? What does that look like? And this is an opportunity for us to, to grow and to develop in these ideas. So I have been visiting connect groups and having conversations with people. Hopefully that has been dialogue and not just monologue. And uh, we've been talking about things like meeting as cells. Uh, we've talked uh, cells of three and cells of 12 uh, for life on life discipleship. Uh, and then we've talked about um, these mid-sized groups. And I think that right now in the weeks ahead, uh, there's with a couple of connect groups getting together. Those are the, the beginnings of mid-sized groups. And then in time, uh, we want to and will get back to public worship gatherings. That's when the whole church gets together. That probably will not be every week um, the, when, the, when the whole church gets together. Uh, so, um, you know, there's good conversations going on and we ask the whole church to pray at this time uh, as we think these things through. So all must be done to facilitate and support the, the purpose, the, the mission, the why of being church, to make disciples of Jesus, to be disciples of Jesus, and then make disciples of Jesus where we are, when we are, as who we are. I think another important element of this is that uh, uh, First Steps, uh, led by Hannah Barton and Sarah Ballantyne, they've been um, trying to meet outside over the summertime. You know, we're, we're coming into a season where the, the weather is even uh, less predictable than during the summer months and uh, it can be difficult for, for mums and, and kids to meet outside. So they want to get back to meeting the Connect Centre as soon as possible. There's also Youth Alpha planned, um, led by Tara and Callum, 
uh, in the weeks that lie ahead, please pray about that. Uh, and uh, Jill and Emma have been talking about, well, if we're going to be meeting as connect groups, what about the children? When do they get to meet each other? I know they're meeting each other at school, but when do they get to meet each other as part of the church family? So there are ideas, but this will be dependent upon um, this, the situation that's going on in terms of regulations and in terms of, you know, when there's people floating uh, ideas of local lockdowns and all kinds of things. So I think it's really important that we as a, as, as a church are willing to be adaptable, willing to be resilient, uh, willing to be experimental, uh, you know, in the ways that we, we meet together. And I think that's really important. So yeah. I don't know what uh, you think about that, Chris, in terms of what I've just said, how we could keep that going. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all we've all had to learn <clears throat> very quickly, haven't we? Just in this season, what it what it means when we can't gather together and how we do discipleship uh, individually or in our families. Um, and this is just that opportunity, I think, to 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 begin to ease into that, but but keeping that focus on on discipleship. And 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 I think as core serve team, we would want you to hear that this is we're excited about this season. This gives us an opportunity to grow in in different ways, maybe in new ways that we possibly wouldn't have done before we went through lockdown we're we're really praying and hoping that this grows our faith that grows that resilience to make us stronger both together but also individually in our faith and that idea of learning from one another life on life discipleship spending more time together uh, kind of not just the busyness of a sunday morning um as i said uh, our connect group when we've met my, my family and i we've come away just really blessed just by being together and it hasn't been that kind of hectic morning trying to grab a coffee and keep the kids entertained and and do everything we normally do on a Sunday but it's actually been really special just to spend time together and and and, uh, and experience life together and okay. our hope is that in these mid-sized groups that happens more that these informal gatherings will be intimate and will be more personal um, and we'll give more time for for each of us in in, in those smaller gatherings to, to to learn from each other and do discipleship um, influenced by each other uh, in a more uh, personal way and, and one of the things just to highlight in terms of how that's going to work there'll be maybe a bit more emphasis on on connect group leaders to, to facilitate that and um, and there will be some training that will be uh, delivered by by Nigel and, and Nick and Mark Ballantyne especially to help uh, guide that through so you'll be hearing from your connect group leaders to give you those uh, those pointers and when it comes to being in in the connect center again um, there'll be those practical steps needed and they'll they'll talk you through that guide you through that yeah. Yes, it is, Chris, it is important that connect groups meet together again, but also uh, we need to be watching out and looking out for those on the margins, those yeah, that yeah. are maybe not part of connect groups or even uh, people that haven't been in, uh, not only in the church building, but part of the church in a yeah. while. Uh, and there, there, there certainly uh, is a bit of um, isolation and fragmentation that that people are experiencing and, and not mm -hmm. doing well with and and yeah. we need to to be invitational and again it'll it'll uh, come down to the and uh, the numbers within connect groups and the numbers that we can get into the building at any one time but uh, apart from even uh, the issue of meeting together i think we we all need to to think about those who are on the margins uh, yeah. those who are more vulnerable and to connect it with them in all sorts of ways, not just to invite them to a meeting, but to be yeah, to be phoning them, to be emailing them, to be checking uh, that they're that they're doing well or that they're doing okay, and yeah. to, to to be including them. So that's an important thing to remember. Yeah, really important. Really good. Um, I, as I said, I think it's it's important to acknowledge that there are many views on how the government has responded to this pandemic so-called and um uh, we, we have our own perspective and that's okay but at the end of the day we must submit our own opinions to the word of god uh and as i've said the, the core text to help us do this knowing who we are as a church uh will i think will be to and we think will be to look at uh, Romans 12, 13 and 14, a very interesting thing that we did at Core Serve Team, and I know that other connect groups have done this as well, that we sat around and we, we honestly shared what we think about COVID-19 mm. 
and about coronavirus and about the public health agency regulations and we expressed our on our real opinions we held nothing back uh, and then and then we read the whole of Romans 12 13 and 14 and the first few verses up to verse 6 and 15 together and we said now this is what we sit under this is what we want to uh, to actually experience in our situation and to model out to others so uh, uh, I think it would be good to, for us to read that now, and, and thanks, Chris, for highlighting that. So um, I'll read a bit, and then, Chris, if you read chapter 14, but this is on the spur of the moment. Um, is James Barton, would you read chapter 13 for us, please? Um, someone will spotlight you and, and unmute you when the time comes. Um, Romans 12 doesn't start in Romans 12. <laughs> Uh, Romans starts with, with Paul saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God unto salvation. And he makes that, uh, he, he spells that out, he lays that out through the first 11 chapters. Of course, he wasn't writing in chapters. Where he comes to the great, um, the, you know, the, 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 the hymn where he says, for uh, of him and through him and to him are all things. Mm-hmm. And then he speaks about how we can, how the, how the Roman disciples, the, the disciples in the, in, the, in the church at Rome could live that out in their context. So may we in the uh, power of the Holy Spirit be able to hear that in light of the fact that we have a great and glorious gospel. May we be able to hear the words that we are now about to read and uh, learn and understand how we can practice these right now in the autumn of 2020, when we are uh, in the middle of a very difficult situation that none of us really understand totally. So um, let's, let's do that. Yeah, we should start in, in, in 11.33. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counsellor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your rational act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is in teaching, let him teach. If it is in encouraging, let him, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. 
do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Right. Chapter 13. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has inst instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from the fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commands there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as you do. Love does no harm to your neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. I go except, on. Yeah. except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One's, one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and give thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me 
every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. For if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. We who are strong ought to bear with the feelings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbour for his good, to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Verses five and six will be the blessing that ends our time online this morning. But now I just want to hand over to uh, Keith. As as has already been mentioned, um, this is a difficult back to school season for teachers uh, and students alike. So Keith, will you lead us for a few minutes? Good morning. Um, I hope this finds you well. Nice to see some familiar faces again. And you always know it's time to go back to school whenever you're phone and whatsapp messages start filling up with jokes from people like trevor martin there especially but school is back for some of us at least and over the next week uh, most students will return to school in some shape or form and it's been an interesting couple of weeks uh, for teachers and for those students who have returned there are continual ongoing changes occurring Uh, nearly, I would say, on a daily basis. And much of these changes are being played out in the media and then being implemented shortly afterwards in schools. And there are significant changes, whether it's changes to GCSE or A-level gradings, whether it's sanitizing one-way systems or wearing masks, whether it's understanding what a bubble is or how a bubble works or whether it's teaching in a way where you have to keep a two meter distance from students, whether that's in the classroom or in the corridors, but you must do it at all times. And there are still many questions uh, to be answered as this term and as this year progresses. And as you know, uh, change often brings with it anxiety. Um, Some people, have more anxiety than others with this and it's not just students or teachers but for those particularly in leadership who are working tirelessly trying to figure out what are the department of education's guidelines what do they actually mean how do we implement these in a way which ensures uh, the safety of all involved and yet at the same time trying to ensure that all the elements of normal school life Uh, function and work as they should and yet in the midst of this 
Um, and in the midst of all the do's and the don'ts are our children who are the priority and they uh, need to have access to a high quality education and yet they have to get used to a school or schools with a difference. So I'm going to hand over to Jill who's going to share with you uh, just briefly and is going to outline maybe some prayer points that uh, you could consider over the coming weeks and then it'll come back to me and I will conclude by praying. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, good job. Um, well, it's good to be back chatting to everybody um, this morning. And very much what Keith has just been saying um, is exactly the same for us um, in a primary context. And even as I've been listening to everything that's been said this morning um, in church, very much what we're facing in school is very similar to what we've discussed this morning in terms of church. So a lot of what I'm going to share here in terms of prayer requests, they're really prayer requests for everybody in the workplace, but also for us um, at, at church as well. So it has been good to be back at school. It's been good to get back into a routine, um, but lots has changed. And the way we've spent our week at school has been very different than what we normally spend discussing, um, as Keith has just explained. But for me, the crux of what I very quickly learned this week was that it was about reminding everybody within work, and it's the same within church, that we're all in this together and that we all need to support one another and help one another um, in everything that we're going through. And it's about striking a balance between health and safety, but not forgetting our core purpose and while we're there. And about not giving in to fear or nerves, but sharing hope and joy with the children, with the young people that we're looking after and trying to keep things as normal and as effective as we can for them while also keeping them safe. Um, and it's really vital that we support one another um, in that work so that we can fulfill our purpose. So I would just ask, obviously I'm sharing from a school perspective, but as I've said, these prayer requests are for everybody working in every field right across the board because these are strange times we're in. So please pray for safety um, for all of us, um, for the children, for the staff, for everybody out there in the workplace. I would also ask you to pray for wisdom. Um, as Keith did say, we're constantly sort of hour on hour, day on day, being faced with problems that we maybe haven't been used to dealing with before. Um, and we need wisdom in how to deal with that. Everybody has different opinions, different viewpoints, and it's just about us all coming together to do the best that we can. Um, and just praying, especially for us as teachers, we're going to come across children in the coming weeks who have come from all sorts of situations throughout lockdown. And people may not be open and honest with us about that. So it's about giving us wisdom at being able to read the signs so that we can support children and young people in the way that they need support. And just pray for those children who have had a really tough time during lockdown those who are struggling emotionally. And for some children, especially at the younger end, it is going to be hard for them leaving their parents that they've been with for such a long period of time. So just pray for them as they come back to school and for teachers as they try to reassure them. Pray for sensitivity for us, um, that we would be sensitive to the situations that we come across. It's very hard to understand what life's like for somebody else if you haven't walked in their shoes. So just please pray, pray that we would all be sensitive. Um, another one I would ask for, I've only been back for one week, Keith, you've managed to, um, is for strength and stamina. Um, if I'm being totally honest, I've never felt as tired in my life as I felt this week, um, just juggling all the extra balls that it's put in place. So just for strength and stamina for us as we get back into this routine, which is going to be incredibly intense, um, definitely at the start. Pray for peace for us all, for the staff and for the children and for the parents who are probably very apprehensive about sending their children back to school. 
and um, so just that we would have peace um, about all that's going on and ultimately just like we've been talking about in church please pray for opportunities um, for us Christian teachers to share God's love um, in all that we do and to make disciples with those whose lives we are building into both the staff and the children that we come across because we are going to have lots of opportunities and I have already this week with staff had opportunities as we've talked about the situation where my perspective can be very different than theirs because of the faith that I have so just that we would get an opportunity to share that in a way that is very natural but that brings hope um, and joy in this tough situation um, that we're all in so thank you for your prayers um, and but yeah it's good to be back um, and it is positive but just pray for us as things are very different i hand back to keith okay thank you jill um so let's just uh pray together as a church um now father i just uh thank you for this time to meet again um albeit online but i thank you for it lord and i just pray as uh, schools return uh, over the coming weeks I pray for the students, I pray for the friendship groups that they will be uh, going back into after five months. Father, I pray for fear and anxiety which may exist uh, there and um, any concerns that they have about their education, their qualifications, whatever that may be. I just pray for peace for them and I pray for uh, peace for parents as well as they see their children returning to school after such um, a long time. Father, I pray for teachers and I ask that you will give them uh, wisdom as they implement all that is being asked of them and as they guide and as they pastor um, students uh, throughout this coming year. And Lord, I do pray for those who are in leadership. Um, I ask that you will give them uh, wisdom to implement all that is being asked of them, Lord, that you will um, yeah, just help them as they do that um, in a sensitive way. And Father, um, as people of faith, may we be your light and your hope, and may we shine um, through these very strange times. You have given us a spirit of, not you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of hope. Father, and I just ask that that may be revealed through us. We lift all of these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and also to those who are watching the live stream on YouTube, you're very welcome. As has already been said, if you want to get in touch, please uh, go on to Connect Christian Fellowship website and get in touch. But let's finish this morning with the blessing from Romans 15. This has been spoken for generations. And we receive it this morning in the spirit that it was originally given. Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement. Give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So be it. That's the way we want it. Have a good day, folks.